Hey what's going on guys, it's Ant here, and today I have an After Effects tutorial for you guys. So it was requested to do a tutorial on how to do really nice looking tracked logos, so that's what I'm going to be doing today. More specifically I'm going to show you how to do, I did this one from Myth Uno's Introducing, let me just play that real quick. And you see it's really nice looking, it looks kind of textured with the wall, um, it has the nice little shading on it as the lights kind of um, uh, shining up at it, and just looks kind of like it has this kind of this faded down look to it. And that's what we're going to kind of be replicating here today on this tutorial. So uh, before getting into that, I just want to let you guys know that I'm going to put the project file with the logo and cinematic that I use um, in a download in the description, so I highly recommend you guys download that and follow along. Go ahead and download that before you watch this tutorial, and uh, just follow along with that. It'll help you out a lot. Alright, so now first thing we're going to do is we're going to take our cinematic we have here and drag it into a new comp. This is not the exact same cinematic as I used in Uno's intro. I had to re-record this morning because I deleted the old one off my computer. But we just need to get rid of this these, this cropping so far. So uh, your scale, hit S on the keyboard, scale up to like uh, 119, and then P for position, and just move this over a bit until it's off the screen. Move it up a little bit too. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna pre-compose this. And why is my my pre-comp windows up here and my other monitor? I don't know why. Uh, so we're just gonna pre-comp that. And now we're going to motion track it. So um, right click track camera and it's going to analyze the clip, make some points for us. So once that's finished, I'll be right back. All right, so our clip has now been analyzed. And as you can see, when we select the effect, you see all these little points everywhere. And we want, so I'm going to get up close to this little spot where we want the logo. We're going to put the logo in this light right here. But what we want to do is we want to get a solid that is going to be where our logo is. So we're going to select three of these points. And if you go in the middle of any three points, that target thing appears. So this looks good right here, about right there. So we're going to right click and create solid and camera. So that's created our motion track camera. It's also created a solid that is motion track perfectly onto the wall. Now we are going to, I'm going to rotate that a little bit because uh, we want our logo to be a little more realistic looking than just kind of slapped on there like that. So I'm going to rotate a Z a bit until the bottom lines up with the bottom of the wall right there. And that looks about good. Looks like it could be rotated just a little bit in the X direction. So maybe negative one. Yeah, it looks good. Okay. Now what we're gonna want to do is we're gonna pre-compose our solid and we're gonna leave all attributes in the main comp. So this is actually where we're gonna put our uh, logo. Actually, I'm gonna undo that. I wanna scale this up a little bit because uh, I want the logo to be a little bit bigger than that. And maybe do a little, little more on the Z rotation. Sorry, I'm just picky about this stuff. Now we can pre-compose, move all attributes. All right, so we have this here. And we're just going to position that down a little bit so it's actually in the light. And now what we're going to do is we're going to go into the pre-comp and delete the solid. And now what we're going to do is we're going to bring in our logo. So what this did, now if I come back out here, you can see I got a poorly made myth logo right there. So um, this is not the right size of our comp. So we can actually do this quick little thing and go to transform and fit to comp width. So what that'll do, since this comp is a little taller than it is wide, if we would have done it height, it would stretch the logo a little bit. But this just centers it nice. So let's see what we have so far. So we got a myth logo tracked onto a wall. Now that looks pretty poopy. Um, I'm not happy with how that looks. So here's a few things you can do to make your logos look a lot nicer. So now we're actually going to go into our pre-comp of our logo, and we're just going to do a few little things to this logo to make it look a lot nicer. So the first one is going to be look up fractal noise. And just drag that onto your clip. Uh, turn the contrast down a bit and also turn the brightness down until it kind of looks black but has some little spots on it. And also look up roughen edges. This is just going to make the edges look a little less sharp and normal. It's going to kind of, uh, let's see what I mean here. Let's see how that kind of just uh, roughens them a little bit. Well, that's what the effect is called, obviously. Scale it down just a tad. Just makes it look a little bit more natural. So now what we're gonna do, this this logo looks all right. There's a lot more we can do to it though. We're gonna duplicate that twice. And for the second one, look at vector blur. We're gonna put two different kinds of vector blur on the some um, duplicates. So I'm gonna solve with this just so we can see what this is doing to it. But we got natural vector blur right here. What's it gonna do? Is that kind of gonna kind of make that give it a faded kind of look? See how that looks really dirty and grimy and stuff. So we turn that back on and then turn this off. 
it just kind of adds a nice little border to it. So that does look really nice. Now for this last one, um, we're actually going to do something else with Vector Blur. And this is the one that really looks good. So uh, change your Vector Blur to Direction Center, no, Direction Fading. I'm going to solo this just so you can see what it's doing. And turn this up a bit. Now what's it going to do, this is going to kind of fade it downwards a little bit. It's going to make it look like it's kind of like washed down by water or something. I don't know, it looks really good when you're putting stuff on walls with this. But uh, we'll have to change the direction of this a little bit if you want. So, so you can change the direction of where the little fades are. And if I turn this back on, look how nice that looks. So much better than just the raw logo. Now one thing we're going to have to do now is because we have this vector bar right here and it's actually going down a little bit farther than we can see, we have to go to our comp settings and just make our comp a little bit bigger. So maybe 2000 by 2000 just to kind of make sure our vector blur doesn't go off the screen. Now it's way bigger than you need to make it, but um, it's not gonna hurt. So now if we come back out into our main comp, we're gonna see our logo there, and that doesn't look pretty good. It doesn't look amazing or anything. I'm gonna scale this up a little bit. I want the logo to be a bit bigger than it is, and we're gonna position it upwards just a little bit. Um, let's see, upwards, there we go. Just so it's kind of going into the light a little bit and kind of not at the same time. Now, what we can do to make it kind of blend in with this light right here, as you can see it has some light shining up onto it. This is something we can do to make it look a real, little bit more realistic, so it actually looks like the light's hitting it. Uh, go to toggle switches and modes, and it'll bring up this thing right here, which is your blending mode. You can also right click and go to blending modes, but I like doing this easier. Change it to overlay. Now, as you can see, it kind of uh, blends it in with the shades of the colors in the background, and what that does is that essentially just makes it look like the light is actually hitting the logo. So that does look very, very nice. I'm very happy with that logo. So that's basically how I did the logo. Also, here, I'll go ahead and show you guys something else, because uh, this is a, this is only 10, at 10 minutes so far. How I did these little things right here with the dirt on the screen. Um, so we want to get a point that's kind of close to one of these lights right here, and just create a null. So we got that null right here. I'll move it in just a bit, maybe back in Z space a tad. All right, so. We're going to pretend that null is a light, and so what we're going to do is we're actually going to make a light. So if you hit Control, Alt, Shift, and L on your keyboard, it'll bring up your uh, thing to make a new light. You can also go up to Layer, New Light, and change it to a point light, and put the intensity at zero. We're only going to use this to kind of um, deal with an optical flare and make it a little bit different. As you can also see, it kind of changed this a little bit. Usually it's going to make it look a little funky, but I actually think it made it look better. So. Um, I'm pretty happy with that actually, and you can actually go into material options and um, make it so it does not accept lights, so it's just default like that, so uh, we'll keep it like that. So um, we have this light here, you can see it's kind of just tracked in space. Now what we're going to do is we're going to get the position of the null, and we're going to copy that, so if you select the position, hit Control c and then paste it onto the light, it'll actually snap right to where it should be right there. So um, now what we're going to do is we're going to create a new adjustment layer. And we'll call this flare. Or we'll call it dirt. Drip. Dirt. Damn it. Now look up an effect called optical flares. If you don't have this plugin, it is a video copilot plugin. Very useful. I use it a ton. But it does have a very nice feature in it where it will actually track lights. So we have that light right there, and let's disable 3D perspective. Uncheck all three of these right here. Make sure you disable that 3D perspective or else it's going to appear kind of far away. Um, but see, now that flare is moving with that light. So I'm going to put this over original, and we have the flare tracked right there. But we don't want it to look like a flare. So go into your options for the optical flare and go ahead and clear all and we're just going to put some dirt on the screen so if you select this main thing right here you can go to texture image dirty and let's just pull the illumination let's do our fall off like that put the brightness up to 100 this is going to take a lot of playing with to get right um, maybe turn that up a bit and you can see we got our dirt on the screen right there that looks fairly nice now one thing I would recommend doing is make it so the dirt doesn't appear until it's about right here. So maybe go to your brightness of your dirt layer. 
keyframe it right there and maybe come back here and put it down to zero. So that looks really nice as you come up, you get sort of get some dirt in the screen from the light. So that's how I did that effect. I know if you guys a few of you guys were wondering about that, how I do my dirt fix. Let me turn this radius down a bit. But yeah, that looks fairly nice. I'm really happy with that. And all I did for that for the other two is I put another one of these right here and another one right there. And if you have multiple lights in your composition, they'll um, this adjustment layer will actually still add the dirt over multiple lights. So if you have one right here and right here, you don't have to make a separate adjustment layer. So I hope this was really helpful to you guys. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And if you did, be sure to drop a like on the video and subscribe if you're new. Also, leave some comments for any editing tutorial or editing quick tip ideas you guys have. And, you know, this is bugging me. We're going to turn this opacity down. Yeah. Okay. So, if you enjoyed this video, if you liked it, be sure to drop a like. Um, also, the download link for the project file for this is in the description. Um, if you want to check out exactly how to do this, get a more in-depth view at it. And I hope this is helpful to you guys. So, have a good day. I'll see you guys later.